be uh, a couple of little verses in the book of Psalms and Proverbs. Uh, it's talking about the same thing and in our message today. Probably most of you, when we get into this, will know exactly where we're going to with our message today, but it's one that I haven't preached on in a while, a little story uh, about some things. And uh, so the first verse will be in Psalms 18 and uh, uh, verse 2, and the next one will be in the book of Proverbs. Uh, uh, 18 also and 10 Psalms 18 and 2 and Proverbs 18 and 10 and David here is uh, talking about uh, uh, being a servant of the Lord and how you know trouble's going to come they are they, they have come in your life whether you was with God or without God and it, you know and it was a whole lot rougher without God than it is with God. But troubles still come. And so when you when you see trouble and you have to go through some things in life, and it's like our sister said, we're, we're most of us all are getting it. Of course, at any age, you can leave and go to heaven. But as per age goes, we're all moving on up to where at any time. You know, we, we could move on out of this world. And I think the events of this uh, of our time is that uh, it could be just any time this whole world comes to an end because of the things. And we need somebody. And uh, that somebody is Jesus Christ. We need him above everything else. So, you know, uh, when, when we're in distress and so on, we need to be able to call upon him. Now, there's a lot of people... I guess you look and see and they have their sanctuary. I guess they have the place of, of refuge that they go to. Today we've got modern terms for it. You know, we well we've got to have our little quiet place, and I, you know, and we've got to have this and that, and it, by some other names that escape me. But we, but it's not by Jesus Christ. It's on our own, or we've got this little group that we can go to to find peace and contentment and. I guess get pacified that we're we're in okay and we're in the right. And God let us know. Yeah. He'll chastise us. He'll let us know if we're in the right or not. Mm -hmm. And if we're in the right, there's no chastisement comes. But if we're in the wrong chastisement, that's good. Right, it does. And you know, uh, and you know, and he chastises us because he loves us. Absolutely. So in our distress and, and problems, and some of us, you know, problems is not that we either need or don't need chastisement. It's just that there's events of life that comes that uh, for our loved ones and for ourselves and so on. And there's troubles and distress and so on like that. So Psalms 18 and 2 says, The Lord is my rock. He's that foundation and so on. And my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Now you can have all these other groups and you can have uh, different things are going on that people help you out of your problems, but there's nobody can help you like God can no. help you. You no. know, Because most of all of this other stuff that we get ourselves into is because of sin. Yeah. And it causes us to stress out. And so you can trust in him, as David said, in whom I will trust. My buckler, he's there to help fight your battles as well, and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. So it's a place you can go to for safety. Now, I, I was studying and reading of some things uh, yesterday evening and, and so on. And looking and seeing how that all of the the many different things of how that kings and uh, you know even in the time of Hezekiah and the time of many different ones that ruled how that they had different inventions uh, you know of 
of machines. You know, we would say, well, all of our machinery is new. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had inventions of machines that could uh, shoot arrows and, and yeah, all these other things them. on the towers. Yeah. You know, they had a tower that was there. Many times you read about the watchmen in the tower mm -hmm. looking for who's coming for the enemy or, or for a message or something that was needed or was dreaded to come. But there was towers there. And so uh, David's looking and saying, this is my high tower. You, he's, he's something that you can look to for safety. And it's a place that, uh, as we often say, for this little child can run to. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look in the book of Proverbs then, 18 and 10. And in this, you know, uh, the writer of this is also saying that in 18 and 10, the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run, uh, runneth into it and is safe. That at the name of Jesus, yeah. the name of the Lord, there is safety in that. That if you depend upon it, as he said, there is a uh, place of, of safety and so on. That when all of the world, and it looks like nobody wants God... That nobody around you, you know, uh, you don't have any, people don't have no confidence in you, but you can go in the name of Jesus. Well, and, and be safe. And, and it's more than just saying, hey, it's you're separated from everybody, but in the name of Jesus, what if you have to go out to do that? You know, boy, you know. You're still safe. He's your tower. At the name of Jesus, when you go at the, this name, just the speaking of his name will save souls. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only name that can. That's right. So you just say that you're, you're safe. If you speak truth in the name of Jesus, it will help people. Yeah. It'll help them in all. Of, not only is it safe for you, but he can bring people into that same safety. That's right. And you know, and so you can proclaim Jesus Christ, and it will help them in. All of their troubles. All of them. Don't care what it is. If we will forsake sin and we will come to Jesus Christ in Him, and at one of these days, this, this name of Jesus is so powerful mm -hmm. that He said, Every knee shall bow. That's right. And every tongue shall confess that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords to the glory of the Father. Amen. We're going to go into the New Testament. For just a minute in the book of Luke and 14 as I said when I get into this a lot of you will probably know where I'm going to go to and end up at but there's there's some things that people look for this safety and and build things and think it is their safety and the most of it in our mindset we have to look that a lot of people are running to a tower that they think is God's. Okay? They're going to a place and they want to build something to establish something. In the book of Luke in 14, he says in verse 28, Luke 14 and 28, when, when we want to be able to establish for us personally and for us as a group and a, a gathering together of believers and we want to build something we better make sure what we're building. That's right. There, you know, Paul said it like this. He said, no other foundation that can be laid right. than that which has already been laid. That, uh, right. that foundation is upon Christ. It's upon that rock. That's so right. David looked and said in the Psalms, and so on, he's my rock. Mm -hmm. He's my buckler. He's my shield. Mm -hmm. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. Where, and, you know, and they said, where I can find safety. And so we, if we have, and how is it? It's the word of God. It's the teachings. It's the doctrine of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. It's the foundation that we establish on that when we do leave this old world, that we've got a better place than this to go to. Right. Otherwise, any other foundation is going to burn and going to crumble. If we build upon wood, hay, stubble, silver, and gold, it's all going to be burned up. Right. Nothing's going to remain when, if we uh, are upon that rock and when 
all of everything else is consumed, it'll be there. Yeah. It's Jesus. It will be there. Yeah, amen. So he said in Luke 14 and 28, For which of you, intending to build a tower, now, if, we, if we're going to start out, or if we have thought that we're on the foundation, mm -hmm. then we need to make sure. Amen. He said, those that intending to build the tower sitteth not down first, and count up the cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, count up the cost. What, what am I going to have to do? Well, you're going to have to, he said that those that uh, want to live right, that want to do right, we've got to forsake it. Uh, if we're going to be a good soldier for the Lord, if we're going to uh, have others to look and there's any power in what we say, yeah. then he that nameth the name of Christ, let him do something. Yeah. Let him depart from iniquity. Yeah, amen, so if we're going to, do we need to count up the cost? Otherwise, people are going to look and say they're, Jesus had a word for four of them, the, the Pharisees. Is that, he looked at them and said, you hypocrites. Yeah, generation of life. Yeah, you generation of life. You're a bunch of snakes. Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking and you've got your safety. You've got your Sanhedrin. You've got the order that is there. We sometimes have the religious order. Yeah. But is it based? They looked at, at, at Christ and said, we have Abraham. Yeah. And he told me, he said, Indeed, you have it for your father. Right. But which father is it to you? Right, yeah. Is he by the one woman or by the free? Yeah, yeah. huh? So they, so he was looking and he knew their hearts. He knew which father yeah. that they were on. Right. And, it, and so he said that sin is not down first and count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it. Is Christ able to take us from this place of sorrow? Sure. Is he able to keep us? Pastor Paul said, I am this and today I am convinced, he That's said, right. that everything that I am, he is able to keep that which I have committed sure. unto him. Yeah. And so we need to have that confidence That's right, that no matter what, if we'll forsake iniquity, if we'll live after Jesus Christ, we have a promise. Yeah. And listen to that. And God, as Peter said, God is not slack concerning right. his promise as some men count slackness. People may look at us and say, why do you keep on and on? Why do we keep preaching, singing, praying to Jesus Christ, laboring in a labor of love even though this world may come against us? Why do you just keep on? Because we know that we was once appointed unto men to die, and after this the judgment. Amen. And we want a better place than this. Amen. We even want to live here that through the promise of Christ and his name, that he said he will give us even here, he will give us abundant life. He will. You already get it. Huh? The abundance of why we're here. Yeah. And not only why we're here, but we can depend that the scripture tells us that if we endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Right. And if we have that endurance, we'll inherit all oh, things amen. because that's the promise of God. Amen. Amen. But God's not slack concerning his promise. Uh -huh. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. That's what he's asking. Even though we've sat down to build the tower, uh, we need to count the cost. Are we willing to live the life to make it to where he's went the way to prepare a place for us that he's given us the promise that if I go away, I'll come again yeah. to receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. Are we willing to count the cost to endure the race? Yeah, Are we ready to endure it? Yes. Though that today we look and see the events of our time and our present truth, they're not getting better, they keep getting worse. Yeah, that's right. Are we, if tomorrow it should show up, I'm talking about bad, bad times. Yeah. Are we willing 
to continue for Jesus Christ? They were those of old that did. Where we give the account, been given the account in Hebrews how that many were sawed asunder, they were destitute, and they were hungry, and all of these things, but boy, they had faith and they held on to Jesus Christ. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, though that they could have had everything in this world. That the word of God says if a man listen that they gain the whole world but yet lose his own soul, what will it profit him? Huh? So who was going to sit down and not be able to finish this thing? Do we have enough to sufficient? Is Jesus, we have to look and we have to determine in our heart and I want to be able to say and have a testimony. Yes, Jesus is enough for me to be able to finish building this tower Amen. and being within it. Yeah. Uh, you say, well, what about all these other towers? Oh, there's all kinds of towers that we can build and there's all kinds of towers we can run into. We can good for the safety. We can look and say in the pen that we can go into what we would call them today a bunker. All in trouble would come. We could go off and we think we're safe in there. We've made preparations for everything that we think could possibly happen. And something else will happen. That's right. Uh, because God's in charge. That's right, James. Amen, brother. God's in charge. And that's the way many of them a long time ago, they thought that those things would be there. One of them I looked and I was reading about and studying about in Judges 9 that Abimelech, one of the sons of Jerusalem, and brother, listen today, that when everything that Israel and all of them had done good under Gideon, but yet they cast their earrings and all the things of gold and went back to making the things of mice and of bats and begin to worship those things and things started going bad again and Abimelech rose up and he said make me king mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. and he said today I'm going to kill all the other 70 sons of Jerusalem yeah, right. I'm going to slay him and he did upon one rock he yeah. said and so at time, listen, today, when Jotham, listen, come up and stood and rather proclaimed, listen, today, because ye men here have done these things and he cursed them and told them that, listen, today, if everything be all right, uh, then you might, might as well have Abimelech as your king. But these things, listen, today, may God bring those back upon, and God did. And listen today, to make the story short to get into it, brother, as so Abimelech come up, there was one tower there in the door to the tower, and he hewed down himself the tops of the trees and began to pack them, and he told all of these men, you do the same yeah, thing yeah. as I'm doing. Yeah. Brother, we can go on and have leaders, brother, listen today, that can have us to go into greatness, but it's not like Jesus Christ. We can have those that would instruct us that could give us great wealth and give us great fame and we can even go and burn down some other people's doors to their towers and take over and slay them all. But it's not like Jesus. No. Brother, you're not going to burn this door no. that Jesus is tower. Jesus is uh, as David said, he is my strong tower. Right. I'd rather listen today. He's my place of safety. You're not going to take it down. No. And brother, listen today. When God executes judgment, our brother, just as he did as we preached about last Sunday about Jezebel, yeah. our brother, you can climb to the highest tower that you want to and think that you've escaped the judgment of God, but she looked out at a window and judgment came. That's right. And brother, listen today. Abimelech came on up as he was secretly told by another king how to come the men are against you. Bring all you men against them. They begin. I listen today to do the same thing and run up. I'm brother into the inner city. I'm brother where there was a giant tower. Help me, Lord. Preaching God. And they come up against the tower and a woman, a certain woman. Yeah threw down a part of a millstone and cracked his skull. Right. To where he cried out to one of his armor bearers, 
slay me that it not be said that a woman has slain me. Brother, listen today, wouldn't you? That woman, listen today, in representation of the church, I'm brother, when correction comes, I'm brother, listen today, we need to be able to receive it. Or brother, it's liable to crack our skull. And brother, listen today, we're going to die without Jesus Christ and judgment's going to be executed. There's going to run up even in this natural. Brother, one tower will come against another. And judgment's going to happen even if God uses the enemy to come against us. Yes, One enemy against another. That's right. You're still both without Jesus. That's right, uh -huh. You're still both without Jesus. And so listen to what he said. Lest happily, after that he hath laid the foundation, how were we running to? Brother, they were in their inner cities. They were running after, listen, Baal again. They had turned back to those things. After they'd done a been cleaned out, our brother had listened and God had tried to get them on the straight and narrow way, but they would turn away from God. Uh, lest happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it, and all that behold it begin to mock him. Uh, brother, listen today, this world may on the opposite end mock us. They mocked Jesus. They did. They may mock us because we're following after Jesus, but God has the last say. Uh, he is long suffering to us. He has been lenient towards us. Our brother, he has been pitiful towards us. And brother, he does not want us to perish. Our brother, he does not want anybody who's extending out his hand to you and I and to all the world. Those that's been before us, we cannot say they did not know, they did not go off to judgment without knowing about Jesus. He said, you can't prove that. Yes, I, I can stand upon the word of Amen. God and know for an assurity that in those times and today and any time that may come hereafter, that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Amen. And it teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Brother, listen today to live soberly, righteously, and godly. In where? Right. In this present right. world. Right. Yes, Their present time has done and gone. Yeah, right. It's ours now. That's right. That's right. And ours, as our sister said, we let us hope and let us pray that those that come after us, that they will preach what? Jesus Christ and Him crucified and want to have Jesus down in their heart. Amen. That they can have the same strong tower that you and I have and not have the worldly towers that are out there. Go with us now in the book of Genesis. You know where we're going. Yeah. Chapter 11. Book of Genesis. Chapter 11. Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. And you think God's not looking at all the towers of Babel today. That we're building us or wanting us a city and a tower that we can go to heaven with. Brother, we're trying to build in our assemblies, our brother, in places of worship. We want our own city and we want to call it by our own name. Our brother, we don't want it at the name of Jesus. Our brother, where we would bow the knee down and say, He's my strong tower. He's my place of safety. He's the one, listen today, that tells me that if I will endure and hold on to him, brother, God's looking down in our modern time, building out modern towers just as they built those and their city. Brother, there's only one safe city. And brother, it's the city of God whom John said he saw coming down from from God out of heaven as a bride adorned for her groom. My brother, it's that city of God. It's the city of safety. It's the city of promise. And he made us a highway, my brother, to get to that heaven. And it's called a highway of holiness. I'm that no unclean be 
peace uh, uh, shall be upon it. Uh, but he's made us a way of safety uh, that in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that we can go to this tower uh, that God made us a tower uh, in this city uh, and his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and brother, God's a looking uh, down upon us today uh, and people's a looking and saying, uh, uh, brother, and declaring that God uh, is no longer got the power and where is he? Brother Hebrews 13 says he's the same yesterday today. Brother he's not going to change. He's the same merciful long suffering God as he was in the days of Genesis. I hear in chapter 11 brother when they wanted to try to get to heaven other than Jesus Christ. Come on brother. Say Christ wouldn't die. Here he was. Oh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the same was with Him. In the beginning, by Him was all things made that was made, and without Him there was not anything made that was made. Oh, brother, that Word was there, and the Word was made flesh then, and dwelled among men, that He came to His own, and His own received Him not. Amen. But it's the same today as many that received him gave the power unto them to become the sons of God. Amen. As many that would believe on his name the star. And the whole earth was full was of one language and of one speech. It was all together. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found the plain. Brother, we think we can find us a plain of Inshinar. Our brother, listen today, we think it's something. We're always looking for something new. Our brother, the words that have told us there's no new thing Amen. under the sun. And he said, listen today in the land of Shadar. And they dwelt there. Sometimes we're happy living in the darkness. We're happy with the material we're building with. We're happy not to have those places that God said for us to dwell in. That we can learn of Jesus Christ and be caught up in heavenly places. We listen satisfied by the flesh to build in anything and it may look good and we may think we've accomplished a lot because we're all of one mind and of one accord but not the mind of Christ. That's right, man. Huh? That's right. Oh, and they dwelt there and they said one to another, go to let us make brick. Uh, what's brick made out of? It's the old earth, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, that which is earthly is earthly. That's right. uh, that which is Lord from glory, it's the spirit. Brother, you can do everything that you want to in the flesh, and that which is on the earth. But he said they make brick and burn them thoroughly, and they, and they had brick for stone. Brother, where's our stone? What is our building material? Our brother, he's given us, as Peter said, your lively stones built up in the holy faith. And brother, listen today, that's rare stones of jewels. I think God's a building and making that wall in the kingdom of heaven. And brother, one of these days, I'm the last stone. Stone will be laid. Amen. Our brother, this thing's going to come to an end. Yeah. Let us make sure, he said, that at 12, 12 foundations, brother, that are there, are those rare stones that he names. Mm -hmm. Let us make sure we're a part of one of them. Yeah. And he said that they had brick for stone, and here's what they had to holding it together yeah. and slam had they for mortar. Brother, listen today, we can have all the rock filthy doctrine brother listen today that's been in all the swampy areas of this world I'm not talking about natural but God shows us the natural things I brother to show us heavenly things I brother that old slime that's in the mud pits and the slime that's in the swamp it's their doctrines I brother it's their views it's their ways and it's outside of God and we say we can still build. Yes, you can. Uh, you sure can. You can build with that brick you make of your own and thoroughly burn it. Uh, because, listen, everything is is a opposite of God. 
He said, by, you, by me, gold tried to fire. Tried to fire. That's right. But we want those things that we say, oh, this looks pretty solid. This is of the earth. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. But it's still earthy. That's right. uh, it's still going to be dissolved. Anything outside of Christ Amen. is going to be dissolved. That's right. Uh, I don't care where you take your views and your philosophies and turn it into things that you can feel and touch. Mm -hmm. uh, still going to go away. That's right. uh, whether we just grasp out there with our ideas and feel with old wives' tales and Jewish fables and brother, we say this is how we're going to get to heaven. And brother, we're using these ideas. And brother, listen today. And we turn them into tangible things. But brother, those things which cannot see, be seen. Mm -hmm. eternal. They are eternal. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, listen, they had swine, had they from order. And they said, oh, go to let us build us a city. Mm -hmm. It's going to be our own. It's not that city of God. It's not that safety that we listen today. If you want a city, then come out from among the world. As I'm saying, when you come out from among the world, where in the world did you go? I don't care where upon this earth, brother, that you roam. You must be in the city of God. Amen. Amen. You're translated. Colossians 1 and 13, I believe it is. That you're translated from the old power of darkness in word the kingdom of his dear son. That's right. So you move from one place to other. And brother, listen today, this place is not made out of bricks that's been thoroughly burned. And it's not of slime. It's not of the rotten doctrine. Brother, it's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's the place of safety. As the psalmist and the writer of the Proverbs says, we can go for safety. We can go, listen today, to have a place to know that God said, if I be for you, That's right. who can be against you? That's right. And all of them, you be there. You be the good soldier within this city and in this tower that when the times come, having on the helmet of salvation, mm -hmm. the breastplate of righteousness, yeah. having your loins gird with what? Truth. Truth. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, mm -hmm. taking the shield of faith right. and the sword of the spirit, which is what? Word. The word of God. And you just stand there and brother God will go before you and drive out your enemies right. and he will help us while we're here on our journey from this old low land of sorrow to heaven's glory. Amen. He will help us. Right. <laughs> Let us make a name. Well, he said, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. We think we're going to get there by our own filth and our own righteousness. On, because he looks at us and says that our righteousness is as filthy rags in the eyes of God. Our views and our doctrines, brother, outside of Jesus Christ and our own ways is not God's ways. For his way is far above our ways. He's far above as heaven is from the earth. And east is the west is far from our ways. That's right. Amen. And he established us away from the beginning. You say, oh, Adam and all of them and the from after. Brother, all of those of mankind. Because it's not just Adam, one Adam. Uh, it's all of us of mankind. Amen. And Eve is the church, yeah. the mother of all living. Yeah. And brother, listen to that. Brother, all of those old patriarchs that lived before our brother, listen today. Oh, they didn't have the same opportunity. They didn't have the same doctrine. It's always been Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. And they all knew and they all looked forward to seeing his day as Abraham said. Brother, listen, he looked forward and he rejoiced when he saw it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's always been about Jesus Christ and it always will be about right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't care how much you try to change this word of God and you take it out to make it simpler and to, brother, listen today, we'll never understand it without the Spirit of God. That's right. Uh, Amen. And so, let us be less a city and a tower. Let, let's call it by our own name. We like to be remembered. Yeah. We've got to have something up there to let people know that we've accomplished something. And brother, listen today, the place I want it to be remembered at is in the Lamb's Book Amen. of Life. That when he looks
concerning he can find my name Amen. and know that I'm a child of the king. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so go up to heaven, let us make us a name, lest we be scattered all oh, because we're established here upon this earth. Huh? Oh my goodness. And we see so many that are rooted and grounded here upon the earth. Uh, they're laying up their treasures here that where the thief can break in and right. steal and moths can eat and rust can corrupt and destroy and it will. He'll yeah. come falling down. It may last for a great long time, whether it be individuals or nations. And we see that they all as long as they're with God, they'll stand. That's why we're getting ready to fall. <laughs> yeah. It's because we're, we're moving away. We don't want the name of Jesus because it is the most powerful thing upon the face of this earth. It changes people's lives for the better. Amen. But they say it changes it for the worse. That's right. We're the problem. We're in the way. Mm -hmm. And that's what they said about Christ. Yeah. Uh, oh, we can just move. We want people to worship their God. So did they in the Bible next time. Huh? They wanted to worship. They had towers named after Balaam. Yeah. I believe it's Balaam Barith or something like that. They wanted their names. Yeah, right. They wanted it by their gods. Huh? And so here in this time, from Noah <coughs> to Abraham, here in this time, they had to have themselves a name, a city. So that they could be remembered. Unless we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They'll scare. If we don't get something established. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh that's what they thought. If we yeah. don't get this established. They'll scatter us abroad. Huh? Yeah. Oh and the Lord <laughs> came down to see the city and the tower. We think that God's not looking and seeing what we're building today. In the United States. Yeah, that's right. And all over the world and other nations and seeing what they're building and how <coughs> their majority of their people and some of those of their hearts and seeing how they're getting to heaven and how they're establishing and we're trying to go back to where we'll be just as one. All over the world. Yeah. So we won't be scattered. We'll be all as one. One mind, one whole. Uh, all as one. Yeah. And we'll have us a great big thing to where we can all do. They don't mind people to worship God. Listen to what I'm saying. They want people to worship God. Not through Christ. But not through Christ. Okay. You can name the name of God. And Jesus knew these things. He knew what they had started, what they were doing in the beginning, in the middle, and he knew what was going to happen in the end. He said, if you believe in God, believe also in that. And he goes on to say, listen, if you, unless you believe I am he, mm -hmm. you will die in your sin. You have to get to God 100%. You have to, the only way you can get to God mm -hmm. is to invite Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that old Noah, when God spoke to him and told him what to do, he had to talk to him to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's the only way that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and Aaron, and Miriam, and right on and on, how that they can communicate. And guess what? It comes down to James Harley Moore. And the only way that James Harley Moore can communicate to God and get to heaven is Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way. Yeah. No man can come to the Father, he said, except through and by him. And no man can come to him except the Father who first sent him draw him. Draw him. That's right, brother. So the Lord came down to see the city and tower which the children of men, not children of God, yeah. but the children of men built it. They weren't asking, how do I build? Is there some kind of instruction, Lord, that you might tell me and it sure wouldn't have been slime to put in it? Because they were using untempered mortar. It was without the Spirit of God to lead them and guide them. Because without the Spirit of God, we're none of His. That's right. But with the Spirit of God, He will lead us and guide us always in paths of truth and righteousness. 
He will tell us, brother, brother, what the mixture of the mortar should be. And it's always going to be by the Spirit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it'll be a part of the Spirit <coughs> of Jesus and of God the Father. That's right. These three are one. It comes into a combination, but it'll hold anything yeah, that's right. that this old world can throw at it. It'll hold together. That's right. Uh, in the spiritual realm. With all these others, whether you can touch it or where it's only an idea or a philosophy, it'll crumble. Mm -hmm. uh, because the storms will come against you. Right. Uh, and if you build upon the sand, upon the earth, it'll come crumbling down. That's right. But you've got to build upon the rock, which is Christ. Amen, brother. Uh, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they, all, they have all one language. They're all talking the same thing. Mm -hmm. They all have the same philosophy. They're all looking and saying it's the ism and the schism. You can hear how they name them. <laughs> all the doctrines and how the society's going to be better. It's an ism somewhere at the end of the name. Mm -hmm. Always an ism mm -hmm. at the end of the name. <laughs> so listen. And how these things and how these philosophers begin to do nothing will, will be restrained from them, them which they have imagined. It was the imagination of the heart. This was continued. About what started at the beginning? Continually upon evil. Mm -hmm. And so what they imagined to do, God was trying, he, was, he sent out the word, brother, listen today, for how for them to get into the ark of safety so that this and that thing that was there and all those philosophies and doctrines, and I like to call it that old filthy water and trash that was floating around at that time. God, brother, wanted to destroy it. And brother, enemy will come against enemy. And brother, listen today, he'll float so high, but God made us a promise. Lord, brother, the floodwaters are high right now. Yeah, I'm not talking that. about natural, mm -hmm. but he said he'll not destroy it. No. He said, I'll destroy it by fire the next right. time. Huh? Because that promise, that witness, that bow, is there for us. Oh, he's made to old Noah the promise. So go to, let us go down. Now that's plural. Mm -hmm. Go to, let us go down. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Yes. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. God loves us enough that when we're trying to get together and brother on the way that's opposite of him, he'll go to the uttermost so that we won't be lost. Right, he'll try to dispel all of those things. Listen, our ideas and our imagination, how that we're going to make it to heaven, how we're going to escape the wrath of God. And I've told this little old story over the years many, many times. And I refer it, look back, and Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child. When I was a young man, and my dad, and Joe Johnson, and Harry Reynolds, and all them, they'd preach hell hot and heaven sweet, and they would talk about all the coming of the Lord, how what was going to happen, and it'd scare me to death. And in my little mind, I thought, brother, that little old man's above the house is where I'll escape the coming of the Lord. Huh? Pack me some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a little water and I'll go in and when the fire's over with, I'll come out and I'll be all right. Uh, that's carnal minded. That's, that's right. you. That's right. uh, but some people, you say, oh, that's far-fetched and that's just useful thinking. That's correct. But how many people think they're going to escape the fire of God with their proverbial peanut butter and jelly sandwich yeah. How that they're going to escape the wrath of God, brother, at the coming of the Lord because they have built themselves a tower. They are dependent upon the rocks and the mountains to hide them at the coming of the Lord on the spiritual governments that are here and what they have come to depend upon that they think that God cannot touch them. I'm too great to be touched. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I have authority. Yeah. I have a bunker. Huh? I'm the king. I'm the king. Nobody. I'm a mighty Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. There's modern Pharaohs today. Sure hell. God's not going to judge me because I believe in this. It's okay. It's all right. Brother, listen today. What's all right for the king 
it's all right for the peasant. Mm -hmm. But if it ain't all right for the peasant, it ain't all right for the king Amen. either. Amen. It's by God's way. Yeah. Because we're all the same in the eyes of God. Amen. We may be in different positions. A listen of authority, no different than the preacher or the lay person. No, sir. It's all sin, sin. That's right. No matter how that it is, no matter where you are at, no matter when, because if God's given us something and granted us like he did David to rule over Israel, David accepted a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but still yet, David had to be corrected uh, when he sinned. Sometimes by Abigail, mm -hmm. the woman. For he got his head crushed. That's right. <laughs> and we need to accept it. Huh? And so, let's go down this. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. God knows how to scatter our night. Yeah. When we're building in the night. When we're picking up slime. Mm -hmm. And somebody, you know, when somebody will preach to us or teach to us or we'll read and there's a philosophy and there's a change of the word of God and there's a doctrine that comes out and they'll hand you some slime. Oh, that looks pretty good. It feels pretty good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I believe I can build with that. Yeah. That pacifies my soul and my flesh. You'd better find out, is it from God that I'm a helping build on this tower that's there? And God is so long-suffering with us, he wants to scatter it. Yeah. He wants us to be able where he can reach you and get to where he can get to our minds and our souls, to where he can speak to us and for us to have a communication to him. Uh, for God heareth not sinners. When does he start hearing us? But him that doeth his will, the will of God, the will of the Father, God said he's going to hear. Yeah. He's going to hear. What's he going to do? He's going to go to the uttermost to help you and I that we not wind up in a place of destruction. Amen. <clears throat> so the Lord's scattered and left off to build the city. We say, oh, God tore. You know, we, we say our modern thing, God tore our playhouse down. Mm -hmm. We ought to be thankful. Amen. Oh, we ought to be thankful that God intervened in our life that in the direction every one of us was going. Yeah. We had wound up someplace other than heaven and we ought to be glad when he come in and scattered our night. Yeah. We ought to be glad when he come in and spoke to us and told us we need to get herself ready right. as he spoke to old Hezekiah. Huh? Get your house in order. Get your house in order. <laughs> Get your house in order if we'll weep and we'll turn our face towards your wall and have that broken heart. I believe God will come and help us and add to us That's right. and to help us. Amen. Amen. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, how much Babel is going on today. Oh. Going on in our assemblies or as it was quoted this morning, Brother Jim, if listen today, if it first begin, if judgment first begin at the house of God, That's right. or with the sinner and the ungodly. Yeah. And in our assemblies, if we would quit the babble and we would quit the carnality and we would look at the word of God, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that God is a spirit and he desires all of those that worship him must worship Amen. him in spirit and truth. Amen. If we just quit looking and saying, oh, brother, that this tower is only that they had to make a big... Well, God wouldn't, if you look at it carnally, God wouldn't have had to done anything. No. If you look at it, they've got to run out of there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you say, well, I'm just getting old that there was dumb and cold buckets back then. Boy, well, we've done as cold buckets today. Yeah, that's right. We're trying huh? the same way. We're trying the same thing. Our brother, if we only look at this thing carnally, brother, listen today, we're looking at it all wrong. Brother, listen today, we have to interpret this thing. It is interpreted by the Spirit that's of God. Right. That's right. And this thing was called Babel. Therefore, the, it is, therefore is the name of it called them because the Lord did confound the language. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. That's right. That he confounded the language. When somebody comes 
Listen today, even in our language that we speak in English and say, offer to you, I've got you a better way than Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's a beauty. We better turn it aside. Amen, brother. But look how many, so many people wants the Bible. That's right. They want it to be something other. They'll take Jesus and something else and do it. And we come right back to the Bible. That's right, man. We're babbling. I mean, even in our modern times, we see it still come up and they say, I can't understand you. You're just a babbling. Mm -hmm. Where do we think it come from? Yeah. Huh? Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. This first. We need our ideas of all of our philosophy and our doctrines dispersed. Amen. Get them far from us. Amen. When we put our ideas from ourselves and it's no longer James's idea, it's no longer James's doctrine, it's no longer James's philosophy uh, and it becomes the doctrine solely of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. James will fire better. And everything that I proclaim of the name of Jesus Christ will fire better. Amen. It will only adhere to that name. Mm -hmm. We're not speaking, not as one that beateth against the air, mm -hmm. not as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, but it's plain talk. It's okay. Jesus Christ, and it's the language from heaven mm -hmm. that can only be understood and interpreted by the Spirit of God. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. No longer be Babel. Mm -hmm. It'll no longer be that power. Listen today that we think we can go up against. You can go up against some in your own name. You can make a great city that you can call it after your own name. And a whole lot of people can come together and go and reach great heights. Huh? You see, all kinds of men reach, as we call it, we're reaching great heights. Our modern language. We, 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 we've got such great success. Mm -hmm. But then you find out the conversation. This book, oh, it's not of Jesus Christ. It's not of that. No, I, I, I. Not that God helped me to get here. Could not have made it without Jesus Christ. No, that might hinder the climb mm -hmm. on the ladder. Yeah. To reach great heights, it might hinder them. They might not be have as much fame or fortune. Huh? Because it's of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and so when he comes and they, they know, they know that their life's going to come to an end. And they're packing their spiritual peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And they've got their, their bottles of water or whatever their drink is, spiritually speaking, tucked away. And this is what's going to help me. Uh, when all of this comes to an end, this is what's going to help me. Why, you know people will remember me. And I've been so big that when I get up there to heaven and stand before the judgment seat, God's got to let me in. Mm -hmm. I fed thousands. Yeah. I visited them in prison. Mm -hmm. Ain't that familiar? Ain't there some scripture for that? Yeah, yeah. Huh? I fed them and I clothed them. Yeah. And I didn't know who Jesus was. Yeah. I did it in my name. I did it in the group's name. I did it in the company's name. And I was the head of it. And I hated this thing. Surely God will let me in. But he'll look and say, I know you're not. Mm -hmm. You're workers of iniquity. Depart from me. Amen. And he'll say to the angels, Bind them hand and foot. And cast them into outer darkness. And then all the weeping and wailing in the gnashing of teeth. And throughout all eternity, we may look and think that we built our high tower and a safety tower. But if it's not of Jesus, it's sort of like this. You know, there's that old song and stuff, and I've repeated it here in other places many times. You can have the world, and all that's in it, you can have the world, but give me Jesus. Amen. Huh? Because there's a realization. That everything in this world outside of Jesus Christ is going to perish. Amen, it's going to burn up with a fervent heat. Get, let us stay in 
the city that God's built for us and stay in the town that he's prepared for us right. with good tempered mortar and he'll stand the test of time. He'll stand all through eternity. <laughs> May God bless you. What we got?